Welcome to the Persistence U podcast with Lisbeth, and that's you as in university. But we're much more of a community here. I'm your host, Lisbeth Meredith, author, speaker, and online teacher. Each week, I'll be delivering stories from amazing survivors and strivers, all threaded together with a dose of persistence. So glad you're listening. Welcome back, persisters and brothers, to another episode of Persistence You with Lisbeth. And today, I'm honored to have Melanie Wexler here. Melanie is somebody who helps people understand how to get a career, get their career on fire, basically. But before that, Melanie really became an accidental entrepreneur. It was 2017 when Melanie found herself working for a friend. She'd ducked out of a very very successful career that was more than what well, was almost two decades long as a recruiter in various functions. And so she decided to dare to leave and do something different and found herself in debt and frankly, in some sort of despair as well. And little did she know all of these experiences would inform what came next. So welcome, Melanie. I'm so grateful that you are here today with us. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm really excited to be joining you. Please. Thank you. Please tell us about what it was like to be working for a friend and having taken that risk and realizing that still wasn't quite it. Yeah. So I left my company. I, my last um, company I was with was, I was with them for um, eight years. Company was changing. I should have left a long time before I did. And, you know, the last, the, there was a can you know, a straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. And I knew I was going to kind of take a break. Um, but I did go immediately to work with a friend and I would say within two months of that realizing it was maybe the worst decision I have ever made in my life. Oh, no. Um, this, you know, he unfortunately would not respect, you know, my decisions or my thoughts or my input and having come from a corporate world and him not coming from that world. I understood the challenges, but I also felt like, you know, I've just coming off of running a million dollar branch uh, for a corporation, very successful, you know, uh, staffing for a successful staffing firm. And I do have, you know, business intelligence, basically. And, um, you know, and this individual did not respect that. Um, found myself not knowing what my own personal goals were. I don't even know if you had asked me then what if I would have had goals or the goals that I had laid out were really about helping this individual, which ultimately meant I was helping him achieve his goals, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you also have to have a purpose and a drive and a direction. And I really sure. found myself not having that. Um, ultimately, he money was very scarce. Um, there was a lot of guilt over if I pay, you know, paying you means this won't happen or this won't happen. Oh, no. um, but I was a, you know, I was a single mother. And again, um, just, you know, it all kind of accumulated to the where he wasn't paying me. Um, I was working really long hours. And I know people on the surface would say, well, why didn't you just walk away? And I, you know, and I think I was already in a state of depression at that point. And I, and anybody that's ever gone through that knows how hard it is to like, sometimes you latch on to the things that are the most common and you latch on to the things that you're used to doing every day as a routine. Sure. And that's what gets you through the day, especially when you're going through a depression, you know, a depressive state. And for me, that's what I think really kind of was happening was this was unfortunately my new normal and I needed to um, really sever ties with that individual sever ties with people that um, you know were not serving my ultimate good and you know and all of that rose to the top when I did find um, you know I started looking for a job kind of 
Nobody knew I was looking for it. I did end up getting an offer. And, you know, I had a couple of jobs in after I left working for my friend that just did not pan out. And I tell my clients now as a career coach, I tell them, You're, I will recommend you do everything I did not do um, <laughs> in my situation. But I also understand what it's like to be there. And not just having been a recruiter. I was a recruiter for over 20 years. Um, But I was there personally. You know, literally 2017, I was depressed. I did not have, you know, I didn't have any money. Um, I started this business. And why we mentioned myself as an accidental entrepreneur is because I literally started this business with no intent of being an entrepreneur. I started it because I needed cash <laughs> and I was right. part, part time and um, I knew I could write resumes because I'd been doing it for 20 years. Uh, I didn't know where this was going to go. I didn't have any intention of, you know, like that wasn't ever on the, you know, I was just like, oh, I'll just get some extra money and this will help me kind of get through these next, you know, maybe these next six months or something. I was very short term sighted when it came to goals. Um what it came to things that I wanted in my life. And, you know, and my mindset was, I mean, I, I think really it was as rock bottom as you get, right. <laughs> and, um, you know, so that's, that's where, I, you know, that's kind of where it started. And now, you know, four years, four and a half years into it, um, you know, still, you know, solopreneur, but small business and have been doing it successfully for the last, you know, really since 2018 on a full-time basis and have, you know, been doing it ever since. So that's fantastic. Now, didn't you get some retraining or some training along the way when you were becoming your accidental entrepreneur self, or did this just slowly evolve? So I did, um, I was enrolled in a coaching certification program. And again, I just didn't know like where this specifically was going to land. I didn't have this. um, I was not in a, and I think part of it was, I wasn't in a place financially to say, oh, I'm going to go off and like own my own quote unquote business or my own practice. And, you know, like I had no money to be able to put, in an investment and not the way that you're told to do it. Um, I didn't have, you know, I was like, what do you call it? How do you promote it? How do you like, so all of those were things that I didn't really, I knew nothing, you know, I knew a little bit about, but I didn't, you know, it wasn't in my wheelhouse per se. So everything I had to learn, I, I honestly, I taught myself, I consumed, um, you know, it was definitely information overload, but I would read anything and everything when it came to naming your business, how to get a website, um, you know, and I've just taken my my time and my pace with it. Um, I just launched my website this year. Um, You know, everything prior was literally, um, you know, just by word of mouth or me reaching out to people. And, uh, and that's how I've kind of chosen. I've kind of gone through it at my own pace and in my own, you know, in my own way, without the pressure of you have to be X, Y, and Z in order to be a successful coach or even, or successful, whatever you're envisioning yourself for. Right. I think that's terrific. I remember you and I talked a little bit before this and you mentioned that you don't like to put on a pretty face like, Hey everyone, it's so easy. And here's me working at the pool and <laughs> tons of money in the bank. Here I am on Instagram. You know, that that can be a really ridiculous and negative message, unrealistic, that we send people who are trying to find themselves in the work world, whether it's working for someone else or starting their own business. And so I love that you just get real and get real scrappy with people in your coaching business. Yeah, I do. And I think, you know, I was always kind of a, I think I've always been kind of a scrappy kind of kid. Um, you know, I, I think that's just kind of inherent and, and, and part of who I was, but, you know, I also know that I was a scrappy recruiter. I'd never fit the mold from a, 
you know, if you had asked, I mean, I literally had one of my VPs tell me like, you are not a natural born salesperson. And there's a lot of sales that go into the recruiting aspect from it. Um, Cause you're working with clients and you're dealing with contracts and negotiations and things of that nature. And, and, and I always knew that, like, I never took offense to it because I always knew that that wasn't, you know, that wasn't my gift. That wasn't necessarily the God-given gift I was, you know, granted from day one that I could be, uh, not, you know, a, a successful salesperson. You know, I always had to work at it. But at the end of the day, too, I think part of the reason I was successful was I was very real. I was very authentic with my clients. I was authentic with my candidates. I never tried to sugarcoat things or, you know, just, you know, put on pretenses or any, you know, just try to be myself. And that I've hundred percent carried through with my practice and not to say that they're, you know, Hey, I would love to be on a beach and be able to work and, um, you know, have, you know, that have that lifestyle. And I, you know, hope to one day I can authentically show up in that lifestyle, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of hard work that goes into being an entrepreneur and having your own business. And, you know, and that goes the same side of even if you're not, you don't have your own business, but just building your career, you know, right. a lot that, um, you know, I'm also like today, I want to give mention to, you know, today's uh, World Mental Health Day. I am very open with everyone. Um, I made a post on LinkedIn today um, and actually did a poll about um, anxiety and depression. And in that's something I've suffered with. I do, su- I do have anxiety, which if not kept under control does lead to depression. Um, you know, I'm very good about recognizing triggers and what I need to do to keep it in line so that I can function properly. Um, but it is something I, you know, I go through and, you know, I've had people say, well, aren't you afraid your clients are going to find out? And, you know, the funny thing was I had a client, I'm an active client today, reach out to me and say, I just learned something more about you that you suffer from anxiety. So do I, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love that. You know, so it's one of those things that I just like, you know, I'm no longer afraid to mention it. Right. And I don't hide it. So it doesn't have that power over me. But also I want other people to know it not to have the power over it, over themselves either. So yeah, I'm just, yeah, I am who I am. And um, you, you get what (laughs) you get, what you get with me. So I think that's just terrific. And really it helps people understand that they're not alone in that feeling of anxiety. And where do I bring that up in the workplace? Do I bring it up and really affects how I show up at a job interview or at my business but how do I manage that? And so it's good that we address these things. And on this date that we're recording it, uh, October 10th, it is, uh, is it World Mental Health Day? Is it? Yes, World Mental okay, Health good. Day. So. Good, good. And just, I think that's fantastic that you put that post up there and you got some reaction. So what would you tell someone who is really struggling? I mean, a little bit all of us are, but we're going through a hard time yep. globally And then somebody who may have already had anxiety and depression, and they're trying to find a workplace where they can bring their best and be their best and maybe have bounced around, maybe like you left a long career thinking I'll work somewhere different. That's going to be the change. And maybe that wasn't it. Where do you start with that? Well, I think the first thing, you know, I was very fortunate throughout that entire time. I actually had a, um, a coach that actually worked with me for free. Um, I don't even to this day really know why she did it. Um, you know, but I think she knew where I was. She knew that I had to get my mindset straight first, that I was never going to like, it did not matter that I understood the hiring process. I had been a part of the hiring process. I was never going to land the job because my mindset was not in place. My mindset was, decimated. It was not, it was, I mean, it was non-existent and, um, you know, it's not something that I'm particularly proud to say like, wow, I allowed myself to get to that point. Um, I think it's a, just a, 
I think it was a accumulation of a lot of things that allowed it to happen. But, um, and that's the thing that we worked on in the beginning. And that's the thing that I th- tell people all the time. Like you never realize how you show up for, you know, whether it's an interview for a potential job or maybe you're talking to a potential client. Sometimes when we are not confident in ourselves and we don't believe that we have the capabilities, you don't realize how that shows up to the other person. And we often think like, oh, I'm doing such a great job, you know, like I'm doing an act great acting job and hiding it so well and it's it (laughs) they don't pick up you know pick it up and you know we like to kind of fool ourselves and the reality is I've been the other person on the other side where I can get that feeling like oh there's something off about this person and she was right I wasn't landing job you know I was still getting job interviews because my resume always could get me through the door I was never worried about that but I couldn't land a job interview Um, I couldn't land a job and it was really because of how I was showing up for myself. And once I started working on my mindset, that's when things started clicking and started to really change for me. So I always tell people like before you really get your mindset in place, but also don't feel like you have to accomplish everything in one felt swoop. Because that's going to put extra pressure. And I think when we've been at home and in this pandemic and we've had, you know, uh, lockdowns, luckily we don't have any here in the in the states right now. But, um, you know, I think we felt this pressure like we have to accomplish like a hundred and million, you know, a hundred million things because we are at home and we so-called have this, you know, all this time at, on our hands. And the reality was we were still going through life. Right. Um, we're just at home doing it. <laughs> and so, right. Um, so yeah, so not putting the pressure that you have to accomplish it all, um, you know, being mindful of what your top goal is and then slowly break that down and work towards it. Um, So those are the things that I often talk about with my clients that, you know, you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily think like, oh, I just need my resume done or I need my LinkedIn profile done. And, and the truth is you really have to work on your mindset before you jump into that job search or, you know, starting a business. Right. I like that. That makes total sense to me. And I like what you said about taking baby steps. You know, it doesn't have to be all done in one fell swoop. You don't have to take someone else's pressure or lead and kill kill it 100% every time when you're looking for a job or beginning a new business. And I think there is sometimes the pressure to do exactly that. So that's terrific. So your business has built bit by bit, and now you're pretty busy. <laughs> How does that feel? Yeah, I'm actually the busiest this month. I'm actually the busiest I've been since I started. Um, And it's just, you know, it's been kind of an, you know, it's always a roller coaster. Um, You know, (laughs) it's always about ups and downs. But, uh, you know, it's a little bit surreal. Um, You know, this month's been a little bit surreal just because it feels like I've been working really hard to get to just this. And I feel like I'm just at the tipping point. Like I know there's so much more to come and really getting my, you know, kind of getting everything into together. And it is overwhelming at times. I mean, a hundred percent. And, you know, I question like, have I taken on too much? Am I doing, you know, too much? And I, I am trying to kind of push myself right now, just because of the goals that I have set for my personally for myself. And, um, and I know that it's going to take some hard work, and to get there, but the, in the end, the, you know, I'll, it'll pay off for itself. And there will be a time that I can rest and relax and enjoy those fruits of my labor. And um, so now I'm putting in, you know, that extra time. Oh, fantastic. And it's a labor of love. I mean, this is, this is where you've landed. This is by design, maximizing all of your prior experiences that you can optimize other people's experience in their lives. So I think that's terrific. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's one of those things that, um, you know, it all rests on me, you know, it all rests on like, if, you know, if I want to achieve X, Y, and Z, well, I'm the one that has to make it happen. There's not, 
Um, there's nobody else, you know, tied to this and, um, you know, it's in, so it is on me, but, um, that is by choice. And I honestly, you know, some people will ask like, Oh, would you ever go back to work? And I was like, you would have to really, it would just have to be something I couldn't, I don't even know what that would be, but it would just have to be something I could never turn down. Um, and it would have to come with a lot of, um, bonuses of, you know, remote work, um, (laughs) and a lot of those things. So like, it would take a lot for me to, uh, give this up. Right. And that's, that's a great way to feel about your endeavor is that it would be a huge sacrifice to do something different. And so congratulations. I mean, that's, that's half the battle. It's not just about money. It's also about satisfaction. It sounds like you have that pride of ownership, really. Yeah, I mean, I really do. I had, you know, it's a, you know, it's not, it's my little business. And again, this wasn't on, you know, I didn't grow up as a kid thinking, oh, I'm going to be a business owner. And, you know, like, what am I going to do? And, um, you know, like, I didn't grow up wanting to be a recruiter either. But, um, and by the way, nobody grows up saying they want to be a recruiter. Um, (laughs) There's never a recruiter you're ever going to meet that's ever going to say, yep, that's what I wanted to be. Um, Recruiters are for the kids that didn't know what they wanted to be growing up. That's, that's what recruiters are. Special skill. Yes. um, Just say that. We we were maybe the wayward children um, (laughs) in school. So um, that's most of where the recruiters come from. But, um, but yeah, it's just one of those things that I I am very proud. I'm proud of what I've accomplished and, you know, and I've accomplished it. Of course, you know, I've taken, Um, I've gotten coaching um, through other coaches and resources and knowledge and always consuming other knowledge from, you know, sources that continue to have practices that I hope to have one day and, um, you know, myself and, you know, it's just a constant learning process. And I think that's also the key is that, you know, you have to be willing to say, I don't have all the answers And I've got to, you know, I've got to definitely teach myself in terms of how to get to, you know, point A to point B and so forth. Love it. Now, if you have a listener, if we've got listeners today who are thinking to themselves, I really need a hand finding my ideal place to work. I need I need somebody to sit with me and help guide me through this daunting process. How would one get a hold of you and where do you begin? Yeah. So you can, uh, first and probably foremost, easiest place is my website, which is find succeed achieve.com. And, uh, you can actually send me an email from, um, my connect page with me, but it also gives you a little bit more his, you know, background in terms of who I am and what my background is. Um, and also all the things that I offer. And from there you can connect with me on all of my social media, um, from link, I'm very heavily on LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn heavily with my clients as well as on a personal business standpoint as well. So you can definitely connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and, um, yeah, just let me know how, how you heard of me. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that sounds terrific. Melanie Wexler, it's been a wonderful day and thank you so much for being here. And, I bet listeners will be able to reach out to you. This is a time where a lot of people are really starting to rethink what matters in the workplace and what is important in a workday, everything besides your standard benefits and pay. So this is a great time to recalibrate. And I really appreciate you being here. Well, thank you. And I agree the world, you know, the world, we saw the world change and it really did set our priorities and our, um, you know, put a lot of things in perspective. And, um, and I'm seeing that with a lot of people, whether it is starting your own business or, you know, what to do in your own career. So, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to have the chance to speak with your audience. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening today. If you've enjoyed the show, please follow. And if you've really, really enjoyed it, tell a friend and go ahead and give us a review. I'll see you next week.